I'm so excited about day two. I am really excited about day two. Welcome to day two of Microsoft Inspire. Don't wanna be caught asleep or be left wondering if we gave all we could give, if we were all we could be. Curiosity is the key to innovation. And it's up to you to use it as a tool. The opportunity to innovate and create new things has never been greater than it is today. And from aerospace to agriculture, from the world of autonomous cars to clean energy, it's about making a difference. If you want to build with us, we're going to build with you. This is what Inspire is all about. with new ideas, with new vision, with new energy. The digital transformation world and what's been going on at Microsoft over the last year and then how it's landing. The use of the technology in such creative ways. Microsoft 365, we're seeing the emotion behind some of those stories that were coming out was, was really special. This entire program is saving 500,000 lives. I want to thank all of you who pushed us towards industry-focused, partner-powered. Our mission is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Together we will make a difference and together we will change the world. We're ready to grow together, we're ready to create some new markets together, and we're ready to have a bit of fun. I can't wait to see what tomorrow has in store. It's in our blood. So for our next story, I want to talk about optimizing operations and how a customer from Australia has partnered together um, to not only drive clean energy solutions, but to do so while saving endangered species on an island off the coast of Australia. So please join me in welcoming to the stage Kashif Salim and Gavin Miller. Kashif is from, uh, Ert, uh, from a company called Trackum. He's the CEO and founder. And Gavin Miller is from a company called Ertech. Johnson, how are you? Welcome. Johnson, hey Gavin. Gavin, how are you? Very well, thank you. So Gavin, let's start with you. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about Ertech and how your company is driving clean energy solutions while protecting endangered species? Sure, Judson. Look, Ertech's a large civil construction contractor operating the mining, oil and gas, uh, government and uh, utilities infrastructure sectors as well as the land development sectors in Australia. Now, we're part of the Barrow Island Natural Gas Project in Western Australia. Uh, and we contract to Chevron. Now, this project's one of the world's largest natural gas projects uh, on the go, and it's the largest single resource development ever in Australia's history. Now, Barrow Islands are very remote. It's about 60 kilometres off the northwest coast of Australia. It's a specially protected habitat that supports hundreds of unique and critical species uh, like the flatback sea turtle. So specially protected species, uh, governments, uh, it sounds like fair bit of regulations to manage. Very much so. We adhere to globally recognised conservation best practices to minimise environmental impact. Now, the Australian government has strict quarantine measures to keep non-Indigenous plants and animals off the island, and Chevron has enhanced these rules with its own environmental controls. So tell us a little bit more about the type of work you're doing on the island to protect these endangered species. Yeah, look, one of the biggest things we do is manage inventory for the thousands of pieces of equipment that are being used on this project, from trucks and plant and equipment right down to waste containers. Since the project's nearly done, we're actually removing all the temporary construction buildings and facilities and restoring those areas back to their natural state. This is involving actually demolishing 800 temporary buildings and all the demolition waste must be transported off the island to be disposed of properly. Uh, we've got actually over 300 containers, like this one on the slide, that are used to transport waste back to the mainland, uh, where they are cleaned and quarantined before being returned to the island. Now, we need to know exactly where all these containers are on the island and where they go on the mainland, so we can minimise the amount of material going to landfill. Now, that's why we engage with Trackham. So, Kashif, naming the company Trackham, uh, my guess, yes, just yes. maybe that you guys track stuff. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay. Our platform is built entirely on Azure um, to track thousands of items for Ertech in real time. Um, and we work with customers all over Asia Pacific. Awesome. So can you show us a system that you built to help Ertech here? Absolutely. Cool. Sure thing. So look, here's our track and dashboard. So this is where I can get an overall view of all 7,000 pieces of equipment on the island. So that's from large earth moving equipment 
like excavators, rock breakers and loaders, to bulk items like small hand tools and even down to nuts and bolts. Uh, with the chart on the left, I can see how many assets are at each facility and who is currently owning them. We can also track them when they go to the mainland, ensuring that we're not using landfill when we don't need to. So it's clearly a beautiful system, um, and then you can see all of your assets, um, how, how your assets are doing by location. How were you doing this before this system? Yeah, look, manually, really, uh, or in siloed systems. I mean, there was different systems for each type of tracker, with a GPS, barcode, and RFID. Uh, some were recorded in our plant system, uh, some in the ERP asset system, and, and many in spreadsheets. So the problem was synchronising the information across these separate tracking systems. Trackham helped us solve this. That's right, Justin. Um, what we did is we identified the problem with the silo tracking system and bring them all together into one Azure environment. Then we use Power BI so that ERTE can visualize and manage the equipment. And then we also use Cosmos DB to store thousands of documents related to these uh, pieces of equipment. Awesome. Judson, if you look on the chart on the left, uh, one of the sites is red, which indicates that it doesn't have enough waste containers for the cleanup. Um, so when we click on that, you can see the donut chart on the right uh, says there's only one available. Uh, the rest are all busy. So we actually need to get a waste container there pronto. So look, I get that red is bad, <laughs> uh, but uh, so why is it so important to track all of these waste bins? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a regulatory requirement. If we misplace any waste, we may shut down the entire natural gas plant, and this can cost millions of dollars a day. Got it. Um, ultimately, our product can help save OTEC operational costs and avoid bottlenecks that can stop Chevron's operations. So quick, let's find an available waste container to transfer. So we'll click on the assets list uh, to the top to find one. Now this uh, will take us to a list of all our assets. Right now it's actually pulling up all the tracking information and inspection details of the 7,000 pieces of equipment we have. Awesome. Now we'll type in the type of container we're looking for in the search, which is bin. So BIN we type, so that goes the subset of information uh, and brings up all of our waste containers. Now it looks like this 001X04 container is available at one of our inventory storage sites. So let's click on it and click on the edit button and that'll come up and that, looking at this container, uh, I can see exactly where it is on the map and it doesn't look too far from the site that needs it. So let's initiate the transfer. Right on. Now, Judson, I'm going to hire you as an employee for a few minutes because I need your help transferring the container. Right on. So I've been looking for a new line of work, uh, so I promise, uh, I promise I won't let you down here. Okay. Now, if you can perhaps put on this construction helmet Got for it. your new job. So it come, comes with an outfit. That's great. That's great. Now, you're okay. the plant manager on the inventory site. Which How do I means, look? Uh, you look, look the part. All right. Look, great, great. Job awesome. opportunity Thanks. for you. It's important. Now, you're the plant manager. Uh, now, this means you're in charge of all the equipment that comes in and out of your site and you have the extra container available. So we're going to use this container on stage uh, for this. So if we can take the phone there, awesome. and you can scan it out for transfer. Great. OK, so we've got the tracker map open already. So if you can tap on assets at the top left. Yep, that's yep. fine. You can click on uh, You'll see a barcode this, uh, icon on the top right. right. Tap that, and it'll bring up your phone's camera. Took a so picture. We can scan. OK, that'll scan and beep. Yep. This guy right, here. And since the barcode's already registered in Trackham, it's recognised it as the available container. Awesome. So now tap on the asset. All right, asset. There. And then you can click on location. And location. There, and let's uh, transfer it to the BW plant wow. and change the status to in transit. Okay. So then check on the, tap on the check mark at the top right, and that'll save the changes to our tracking system. All right. Cool. Fantastic. So about this in transit part, how, how does that happen? Well, <laughs> welcome to the team, Judson. Please take the garbage can off the stage uh, for us so it can great, be transferred. Great. Good, good. So this is really talking trash, I guess. <laughs> this is good. There we go. Always wanted to be czar of janitorial services. <laughs> thanks, thanks for helping out. Now, Judson, look, we must do this for every single piece of equipment, both on the island and the mainland side of the project. Using one secure device that can scan any type of tracker and upload to one single system, this actually gives us the ability to know and react like never before. So Kashif, you built a fantastic system using IoT capabilities, Azure and Power BI, and it's even connected to secure devices. Absolutely. So Judson, um, because we are using this on oil and gas plant, we need to make sure that we're using intrinsically safe devices, which runs app on multiple platforms, and then we connect to Azure platform at the back end. We also use SSL encryption for data protection. Awesome.
Now, we're also implementing SPE E3 into our operations as well, so this ensures we've got the safest and most secure environment for our productivity tasks. Awesome. So we appreciate the investment in Microsoft 365. <laughs> uh, so, so look, this is great. Uh, what can you guys tell me is next for, for Trackham and Ertech? Judson, remember, big equipment and machinery is transported to the island in parts. Um, then they are cleaned and shrink-wrapped as part of the quarantine measures to prevent non-indigenous species from being introduced. So let me get this straight. Everything you take to the island, yes. you first take apart, yep. shrink wrap it, yes. take it to the island, yes. and then put it back together again. Absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, just, we just want to make sure that we don't introduce um, non-indigenous science. Great. Yes. Right on. Cool. So, um, as, uh, let's, so what we actually did is we enabled Autodesk 3D modeling software. Um, and build a track and plugin which connects to Azure backend data. Awesome. Uh, which helps Airtech to, to track the item. Um, so Airtech can actually see in 3D model of the equipment what it's supposed to look like once it's built. Let me show you. So here is a standard 3D uh, model of a gas tank system. Very you can cool. see how it looks like. Um, but remember, Judson, everything comes wrapped in white shrink wrap. Right. So you don't always know what the parts are by just looking at a pallet of equipment. Got it. Okay, so what we did is we built a track and plug in. Um, over here, you can see that. Um, so let me just um, go up here and click on show status. So I'll click on show status, and it will change the color of uh, the icons in, in the 3D model. Right on. And you'll see that colors um, have changed to indicate their status. Pieces in green are delivered, yellow is in transit, and uh, red is not delivered yet. Awesome. So if we had the waste bin that I just transported, it would be yellow because yep. it's in transit. Absolutely. So it looks like these, these red pieces here are pretty important. Yeah. Uh, so, so what do you do in this circumstance? So if, if we can't start the construction on this tank. so. Yeah. So I would imagine as a site manager, Gavin, it's pretty critical uh, to have visibility to where all of these pieces are at all times. Oh, absolutely. Look, uh, with the white shrink wrap, you might not know what you're missing until it's too late, and that can set you back weeks. Got it. Judson, another new technology we are trying to deliver is tracking inventory using drones. Um, do you want to have a look? Like here and now, a drone, Absolutely. right here. You want to have a look at drones? I think it might actually be a partner conference first <laughs> to have a, a drone in a keynote. Yeah. Okay, Judson, now we're going to put you to work again. Another okay. new job opportunity. Good, good. You can put take my this back on. Uh, box with the RFID tag on top and right. put it out right in the middle of the stage there. Well, I haven't done honest work like this in a long time. <laughs> my staff's not supposed to laugh when I say that, but... Okay, it's in place. Here we go. We've got drones flying. Yep. <laughs> Judson, we fit them with long-range scanners, further. then fly them over the entire inventory warehouse to scan hundreds of assets at once. So it will hover and um, read this piece of equipment. Awesome. Cool. That is super cool. Yes. <laughs> right on. And here are the results of this scan. It found two tags, not one. Okay. Uh, so obviously the uh, drone scanned the box, and, but there was one more tag, which was in my pocket. It actually scanned the tag which was in my pocket, so it clearly doesn't require the line of sight. Right on. So it's really, really important to, to use this technology. Cool. And, yeah. yeah, how about it? <laughs> So what's nice about that is, is, is you cover a lot of ground on the island and can scan a lot of equipment, uh, but also it helps with protecting the endangered species Absolutely. because you don't necessarily have to get close to a sea turtle that might be near some of the equipment. You can just kind of fly around exactly. it and pick up yep. the tracking. It's fantastic. Um, and as, as I mentioned, um, Judson, it doesn't require line of sight, um, and it can be used offline so that we can upload this information into Azure. Awesome. Well, listen, guys, I can't thank you enough for sharing. You've done a fantastic job of not only helping to drive clean energy, but also doing it in a way that protects the environment. So yeah. thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Judson. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.